are back on gaming. I want to say this right now. I, I just, you know, I've just seen so much stuff over the week. I should say over the weekend. You know, I'm not going to talk much about Gamergate due to the fact that there's just so much stupidity. And, you know, it's not just Gamergate. It's just in general, in our community. And the way I feel, it, it's been going on, like I said, since the weekend. I'll say up till right now since I'm recording. Even the comments that I'm reading, like, in my comment section of other videos, I'm just like... You can't be that stupid, right? That's impossible, right? You're not going to say anything I'm going to take you seriously, right? Like, it's one of those type of things. And it's kind of sad when you start seeing people who have been engulfed so much in this whole Gamergate thing. And then they start using that type of lingo towards people that have nothing to do with Gamergate. Or on subjects that have nothing to do with Gamergate. It tells me that you've been... You've been Fighting with people way too long, and it's time for you to come off the internet for a little bit. And no, I'm not saying, you need to get the fuck off the internet. No, I'm saying, it's time to come off the internet for a, a bit. Take a breather, and reevaluate everything. Because, seriously, the things I've seen, I mean, I've seen people been called shitlords for no reason. One person, some idiot, called me a feminist over a link that had nothing to do with feminism. <laughs> like, this, it goes to show you just how, how much they, they get into it, they, 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 Come so consumed with it, and they don't know when to turn it off, or maybe the lines have been blurred too much, you know? However, like I said, I'm not going to talk about too much, but I do want to give you an example, uh, another reason on why I'm not going to talk too much about it this week. I want to stick pretty much to gaming, but it does still have to do with our community, and once again, Brianna Wu opens Brianna Wu's mouth. I, You know, every time I say Brianna Wu, it's almost like I'm looking at Brianna Wu as some type of rare type of Pokemon. That, that's how I see it at this point. And, um, you know, Brianna Wu has been triggered. Brianna Wu has been caught. Brianna, you, you know what I mean? That, that's how I feel. While Brianna Wu appears. It's the same thing over and over with Brianna Wu. And what Brianna Wu had to say on Twitter really makes no sense, and it's very illogical. So, let's see what Brianna Wu had to say. Uh... Brianna Wu, you've got to be kidding me. Alright, you know what, let's just get in this right now. I just want to read this real quick, alright? It says, Gamer Gators calling to tell us they are coming to our house to kill us using their phone number. Come on, at FBI, you can crack this one. So, Brianna Wu, alright, someone calls your house and you know, you know they're part of Gamergate. Is that what you're going to say? You know specifically that they are part of Gamergate. I just want to, because, you know, as we know, it's a hashtag. It's, it's a, damn, anyone can use a hashtag and say, you know what, I'm going to find Brianna Wu's number, I'm going to call her and fuck with her. That's what they, that's what they could do. You could find someone on the street that would go, you know what, I don't know what this hashtag is about, but why not join in the fun? Because guess what, there's assholes in real life who would do that. That have nothing to do with Gamergate. So, if you're going to sit here and say that it's Gamergator's fault, you better have some proof that it's actually Gamergate. Now, here's the illogical part. Because you're saying... Using their phone number, their real phone number, their phone number, all right? It says, come on, at FBI. Now, now I, want, I want to get something straight. If someone calls you and tells you that they're on their way to come and kill you, all right? They're on their way to come and kill you. That means they're not far away because they're coming to kill you. Are you going to tell me you're not going to pick up the phone and call the police? You know, the local authorities and say, hey, we have this person's real phone number. They just threatened to come and kill me. I'm, you know, I'm afraid. I need someone to come out here. Or are you going to spend your time tweeting all those letters first before you get to at FBI and say, you can crack this one, hoping that they'll respond to you? That's, that, that's what you're telling me. This is the illogical part. See, this is what makes me pissed off due to the fact that you should know. Anybody in real life should know because a lot of our followers after that responded with, that can't be real. They wouldn't use their real phone number. Uh, I don't think it's real. Period. Due to the fact that we already know that Brianna Wu has been caught harassing herself before. I don't know how people keep fa falling for this. I just don't understand that. It's disappointing to see that this person has to go to these extremes. Alright? These extremes. To keep in the limelight. Because let's be honest. If you have their real phone number and you call the police, we would have heard something by now. Somebody would have been arrested. Somebody, somebody would have been caught. Somebody would have. So I'm not trying to hear that you had you at the FBI. Like, 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 like seriously, let's break this, like, common sense, okay? Someone's coming to kill you. Who are you going to call? And before anyone says Ghostbusters, I don't worry. Someone's coming to kill you. Are you going to pick up the phone and say, hey, I need help? Or are you going to tweet the FBI? Tweet the FBI in hopes they respond. 
Because God knows what the FBI's mentions look like. Tweets all the time. I'm just saying. Besides, didn't the FBI already investigate Gamergate already and he said he found nothing? So, like I said, I need to see some proof. I need to see the police report. I need to see something. You just can't go on Twitter and say something like that and then not offer any type of, you know, any type of response. Because people are asking, what's going on? Nothing. No response. This is what you call grandstanding. This is what you call trying to draw attention to yourself, and it makes the situation worse. We've seen these type of things over the weekend as well, because you are escalating a problem that really doesn't need to be there. Could you imagine if people just sat down and talked? And you, like I said, a lot of people have said before, even when this all started, all right, this could have been solved by at least a week. But instead, you decide to start cursing people out, saying gamers are dead and all this. All right, you know what? I want to move on. Like I said, I'm not going to talk much about gamer games due to the fact. I just wanted to give you an example of what I'm talking about, man. All right? However, we'll move on. let's move on to gaming. This is still gender-related. has nothing to do with Gamergate. Nothing. But it is part of our community, for those who don't know. AJ Lee, or AJ Brooks, for those who know she used to be a WWE wrestler. She's now retired. Married to CM Punk, who is Phil Brooks. Um, she is opening a scholarship for Girls Make Games Camp. Okay? So, girls between the ages, I believe, of 11 or 12 to 14... Uh, can, can in, in this type of contest can compete, and the winner uh, gets an AJ Lee uh, scholarship. So let's let I want to get something straight here because this kind of upsets me. Not because it's all girls, because that's what we keep hearing in the community. We are being oppressed because we're women. First off, do you understand who you're talking to? All right, we can go back to little things. I can sit here and talk about slang and how people use you know our culture slang just for a trend. I can't tell you how many people in the last hour used the word hater. But we won't talk about that, right? I really do need a picture of Kermit in the corner just drinking out of the lip and iced tea. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, but when you sit here and say that you're being oppressed so that you need to make these type of scholarships simply for girls, it almost makes me imagine that there is some little boy somewhere around that age who is probably excellent at game programming things that nature because he's, he's just talented. You know what I mean? He gets it. He's talented. And decided that he would, you just think about it, he would be pushed away. Simply for the fact that he's not a girl. You know? If this is about the progression of our, our games, our community, then you shouldn't... You, still, you shouldn't be having this, we're just going to keep everything singular. Because if you want to talk about equality, that's not the way to go about it. it it's, people are looking at it as it is, you know, with us or against us almost. And people are looking at it as, well, we have so many male developers and male gamers and blah, blah, blah. That means we need to have more female gamers and more female developers. We need our own thing so that we'll be on the same level on each platform. No. Because if you're here and then you want to raise up here by knocking down the other person, you're not going to be here. And that's the problem that we're having. It's not true equality. So if you want to say that you're a progressive, then really act progressive, because what you're doing right now is not progressive. I'm just saying, it's not. It's kind of sad that people would be pushed out for any reason. It's actually segregation. You know, it's gender segregation, because it's, it's, of, it's of race. I mean, not of race. It's of gender. You're pushing away people simply because of their gender. It's not all oh, it's sexist. No, it's more than that. It, it goes further than that. It really is. So, it's kind of sad to see something like that, to me. It's sad to see something like that. I would really hope that they would reconsider, but because it's with Girls Make Games, it's only for girls, and what can you do, you know? I guarantee you if they had something that was just for men, and we saw that they tried to have a, a tournament that was men only, and we saw how many people freaked out about that. Could you imagine if it was whites only? People would freak out about that. If we had a, black, a blacks only thing, people probably wouldn't freak out as much. They would say, yeah, they deserve it. That would, they, that's what people would say. There's too many double standards I'm seeing, you know, these days. Especially if we all want to be... You, I'm like this. You can't say you want to be treated equally and then try to say, well, we're unique, we need our own thing. You can't. And we're seeing that time and time again. Hence the example I just gave you not too long ago about our culture and people taking slang and things of that nature. It's the same thing. Like I said, you can point out these things left and right all the time. But true equality, if you want to be treated as equal as your fellow man or woman, then there has to be, something has to give. Some lines have to be, you know, taken away at this point. There just has to be. And I feel it's just wrong. Anyways, I want to move on. And I want to talk about EA. And their bullshit. We them. EA. EA. I don't know what you've been doing. I, EA. Jesus. The ACCC 
forces EA to offer refunds for Origins, uh, was it, digital downloads. That's right. Because, as they feel, everyone has felt after a while it's been false advertising anyway. But they have to offer refunds. There's a link in the info bar specifically on why, okay? Also, Battlefront is missing features and is defended by EA Dice. And milking allegations, hashtag milking, yes, alright? Hashtag milking allegations, fired off by fans, destroys the hashtag, break the internet campaign. So it goes to show you that, once again, fans are very upset. Already, this game isn't out yet, and they're upset because, the, you know, the developers are defending the lack of features. There's no way. I don't understand how you're going to pay all this money. And then, of course, they will come up with DLC packs and try to get you that way, too. Milking. It is milking. Hashtag fucking milking, as far as I'm concerned. But let's move on. EA and Visceral Games are working on a Han Solo Star Wars game. That's right. Now, it's a, I'll put it in LinkedIn for I'll put a question mark. The arc lies a question mark. But there's a number of tweets and casts they've met up with, you know, voice acting casts, that would say that it's going to happen. After this Battlefront thing, I, I think they're going to hold the brakes on. They're going to pump the brakes on this. Because for everything that we're getting ready to see about this backlash, especially for how much they want to sell for this, and we talked about this uh, last week, how much they want to sell, you know, how much they expect gamers to buy this game, this may not go well. I mean, the Han Solo game sounds fun. I mean, let's be honest. If you're Han Solo nine times out of ten because of the Star Wars, you know, the mythos of it and everything, you may just run into Bubble Fett. You may just. I mean, Bubble Fett even had, uh, had its own, uh, his own uh, game at one point. I believe on the PS2, right? So, uh, or was it PS1? I believe it was PS2. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I don't know what they're thinking when it comes to this. EA, again. Oh, I'm sorry. Former EA CEO says that the PS4 deserves to beat the Xbox One. Are we still playing the console wars? I mean, do people still talk about this stuff? The fact that this person, this, this, the ex-CEO just came out and said the PS4 deserves to beat the Xbox One. I, stop. Stop. Just stop. Alright? The console wars, I haven't heard anyone talk about console wars that my PS4 is better than your Xbox One in a very long time. And for this person to bring it up, look, last thing we need to do is reignite the fire. Okay? Last thing, alright? It's, there's been more pressing issues than, oh, my console's better than your console. So, for this person's sake, you know, and, that, and that's ex-CEO, that's, that shows you how engulfed that person was when it came to that. Because, like I said before, years ago, what did I say? It's a campaign to get you to buy stuff. It was to make sure that you, they tested your loyalty to specific consoles. And we saw, when certain games came out on certain consoles, people were automatically bagging on it simply because it was on that said console. Did we not? Okay. And if you don't believe me, you can go back and look at the debates between Resistance and Gears of War. Resist, we're not going to play Resistance because of blah, blah, blah. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. Instead of just buying your games and playing your games, nine times out of ten, most gamers who were involved in these console wars, they spent more time arguing about the damn consoles than playing them. I don't understand that. Paid all that money and now you going to play it? Whatever. Anyways, let's move on. I want to talk about some fighting games. That's right. Actually, before I talk about fighting games, uh, in PS4 and Xbox One News, for those who don't know, um, they're getting an open-world survival horror game. That's right, I put the link in the info bar, just to let you know. So both of those are, and of course, the Wii U's been shut out. Okay, anyways, let's move on to fighting games. I just... Anyways, MKX. Let's talk some MKX. For those who don't know, there was a lot of complaints about over the week, uh, was it, about uh, unlocking things. And as we know, we've talked about this before, about players actually buying unlocks and people being upset and saying, hey, why don't you just learn how to play the game and unlock it on your own? You know what I mean? That's part of the game. You paid for the game, unlock it the right way due to the fact that, come on, let's be honest here, you want your money's worth when you're playing the game. You want to be able to spend your time and invest your time in. And a lot of you had said, you know, that you were for that, you know, spending your time and investing in the game. And some of you had said in the comments as well, you don't have a problem with, you know, paying for unlocks and things of that nature. Well, someone brought to Ed Boon's attention and Ed Boon gave the excuse that it's different times on why there are paid unlocks now. Now I have to agree with Prion there because he went right after Ed Boon as you can see. Look, I put it like this. You can't say gamers, the tower is a chore, the crypt is a chore, you can skip fights to get to the story. Remember, it used to be the other way around. You can skip story to get to the fights. So you're skipping gameplay to get to the story, and all these other things are a chore. Why did you buy the game? What is the point of buying the game if you're not going to spend the time to play it? I don't understand it. Like, it's one thing, and like I said, people said, you know, not too long ago also, they didn't have a problem with easy fatalities and things of that nature. 
What is the problem that you cannot learn? What would you have done if they didn't put this in the game? If they didn't make it easier? Would you have still bought the game? And said, you know what? I just got to try harder. Because if you're going to say yes to that, then why would you do it now? Just because an option doesn't mean you need to use it. But it also doesn't mean you need to justify it. I don't understand that. It's real simple. Learn the game. I understand you want to have fun. Everybody wants to have fun. But as you can see online, and we've talked about this before, we have seen, especially over the weekend, so many salty people online. So many. Just watching people play and seeing how upset they get via mic. And it's like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, come on, man. When someone says, pay your respects and you lose, pay your respects. Don't sit there and, and I'm not going to give this guy anything zero because he, he almost double flawless me. Stop. Stop. Seriously, take your beating like an adult. Take it like a competitor. And this, this is what we're seeing as a late. Look, if you want to quit or whatever, fine. You quit, you quit, whatever you can't take anymore. But if you finish your game and you lose and you says pay your respects, pay them. Because that person was better than you. They didn't cheap you out or anything. They were just better. Get better. Play harder. Play, you know, play with some urgency if you need to. Concentrate, because I see a lot of people on their mics, you know, or here, I should say here. A lot of people on their mics, when they're playing, they're doing all types of other things in the background. They're talking to all these people, doing all this, and granted, it's supposed to be fun. But when you lose, you get upset. I don't understand that. You can't at one point say, this is supposed to be fun. Hey, wait a minute, I'm losing too long, now I'm mad. That's a bunch of garbage. That's garbage. And we're seeing this too much, too, this is too often. It's way too often. As far as I'm concerned. This is something, like I said, pay your respects, learn the game. But for Boone to come out and say something like that, that is very disappointing to see. Now, we, as we know, High Voltage, we talked about it last week, how the, M, was the MKX PC version was having a lot of problems. And that, um, was it that, uh, was it, they had to, they put a, a patch and then the patch killed the save uh, data. And you had to, they had to, um... Was it removed the patch? We know that. And now we're finding out, because remember, the, the articles that I've seen so far, all they kept saying was it was NetherRealm's fault. Now we're hearing that it's High Voltage that did it, okay? Now, for those who don't know, High Voltage, when it comes to MKX, they will be making the PS3 and 360 version. So if they can't get the PC version right, and they're having all these problems, can you imagine how the console version is going to be for the 360 and the PS3? Can you imagine that? This is just going to be a, a big problem in the future, I feel, especially with high voltage, okay? Now, I do want to move on. I want to talk about uh, Panda X Gaming. For those who don't know, we talked about last week how Markman had uh, someone broke into his car and, and stole his equipment, right? We, you know, when he was doing, uh, was it Tekken? I, was it last week or the week before, I think? Uh, when he was doing the Tekken, uh, Tekken 7 reveals, right? And someone broke into his car, stole his equipment, things of that nature. Well, now we have another one that's happened, all right? Panda X Gaming stream equipment has been stolen. And this is something, look, we've already talked about this, about how bad these type of things can be, okay? We already know that you shouldn't leave equipment in your car. You shouldn't, all right? But for what we're hearing, the person, like, when this stuff was stolen, it, it, it almost makes me feel as though, like I said last time, they don't live in the real world. Because his excuse was, well, the person had to be following me, which, okay, the person probably scouted you out at the, you know, wherever you were at, and, and saw your equipment, fine. Because what was stolen was like a laptop, camera, was like all this stuff that was stolen in the car. But then he goes on to say is that my, my windows were tinted, so he couldn't have saw what was in there. What the hell does that mean? What does that mean? Like, what does that mean? What does that matter? You should know anybody, and I'll tell you this, anybody who has lived in a bad neighborhood, windows tinted or not. Cars get broken into. In bad areas, you can have a car alarm, you can have a club on your car. Guess what? People, and I'm sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about, people who have systems in their car and they have amps in their trunk, what do they do at the end of the night? They take out, they take out the amp out of their trunk, regardless of tint, regardless of security. They got locks on their rims. They got... Stop. Stop. So, no, I'm not trying to hear, well, I had tint in my car, so they couldn't see. Does it matter? If someone's going to break into your car, they're going to break into your car. Does it matter? They may have scouted you. It's very possible. I'll give you that. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on that one. But the city here said, well, there was tint in my car. That don't mean a damn thing. It means nothing. And I think some of these people, they really need to start looking at the real world. Is this bad that it happened? Yeah, it's bad when someone gets their car broken into, all right? It is. But you have to take precautions, especially when you have that much amount of equipment in your car, just sitting in your car. 
regardless of Windows 10 or not. And for those who also don't know, all right, here in, I don't know if it's in your type of state or country, but here in Philadelphia, if your tent is too dark, you know what's going to happen? The cops are going to pull you over and say it's illegal and give you a ticket. So I'm just letting you know that. So I'm not trying to hear this, you know, it's this tent. No. Is it, is it unfortunate that it happened? Yes. But that's, it's almost like you're trying to plead ignorance, you know, for something that happened. Oh, we got a tent in my car. I don't, that doesn't mean anything. People will break into your car just to break into it. It can be in broad daylight. It can be at night. It doesn't matter. People do a lot of things. The desperate people do a lot of things when they want something. Or if they feel as though they need something to feed, you know, themselves or their family. Like I said, it could be greed. It could be desperation. But they have, right now they're having, a, a, I believe it's a GoFundMe or something like that, to get that money back so the person can get their equipment back. It's, you know what, that's just, no. I'm just, I, like I said, I feel bad for them, but I, it's one part of me that says you should have known better. Especially for what we've seen already. I mean, it's common knowledge in the real world, you should not leave that type of equipment in your car. And I know a lot of you say, well, no one should be breaking in. I, I get that, I understand that, but there are people out there who do. You have to take safety first, precaution first of your stuff. You can't say, oh, well, I don't think anything's going to happen because of the neighborhood I live in or what's going on. Or, you know, nobody, nobody would do that. Nobody. No, no, I'm not trying to hear that. Not at all. Let's move on. CEO. I want to give CEO shout-outs. Jay Bailey, I want to give you a shout-out. I met Jay Bailey at, uh, was it, the Extra Life Tournament last year. He actually played dive kick. Um, Jay Bailey, for 2015's... Persona 4 Arena Ultimax finalists, they will receive the Teddy Championship. And for those who know what I'm talking about, this is what the Teddy Championship looks like. I think that's pretty damn cool. And as far as I'm concerned, I've said before, I would rather compete for titles, for medals, for scholarships and things of that nature other than just money. Because I think those type of things, they have more prestige, you know? You can really do something with that, you know? You can... I, you know, I, I don't know. That's just me. I, I really think that that is a great idea. So for anyone who's going to go to CEO, I have to skip it this year. But, um, because I was supposed to go. But, um, for anyone who's going, you're going to play Persona 4 Ultimax. By all means, please, go take home the championship. That looks pretty cool. Um, I want to move on, talk about more fighting games. Capcom. Capcom. I'll talk about the reason I'm upset, because later, we're going to talk more about Capcom, okay? Later. But, Capcom plans to sell... 2 million copies, that, that's their target. 2 million copies of Street Fighter V, that's their target. I would have thought that they would get more. I mean, I personally thought they would get more out of Street Fighter V. But maybe, you know what, maybe you flooded the market too much. You may not even make 2 mil. There's enough, there's enough Street Fighter fans out there to, to get that 2 mil. There is. But sh people still fail to realize, and I've said this before, the reason Street Fighter IV did so well was because it was on a next-gen system. We didn't have a Street Fighter for quite a while, you know, a, you know, a big-time Street Fighter game, you know, until the PS3 came out, or 360, and then they brought out Street Fighter IV. That's how it worked. And because it was the first of its, you know, first of its generation, everyone flocked to it. The same thing with Resident Evil, you know, Resident Evil 5. It was the first of its generation that came out, you know, on the PS3, 360, everyone flocked to it. Not because the games were good. I put it like that. That's why we've seen so many balances and so many patches and so many different iterations. As we know, that's what Capcom does with iterations of fighting games. That's that's why, because it needed so much more. That's why you go back and say, oh, well, I played vanilla, whatever. Yeah, that's the reason they call it vanilla. Because it needed so much more work. It did. And some people say, well, I'd rather have this character this way, as opposed to, you know, the you know, the, the updates they've made to certain characters. I get it. I get it. Alright? But they said they won't they expect two million copies. We'll see if that happens. I think they'll make it, but it really depends on the fanfare. Because as we know, this is what? PS4 exclusive? Or something like that? So you're asking for 2 million copies from a specific uh, fan base on a specific console. I don't know how well that's going to do. I really don't. Last I heard, it wasn't for the Xbox One. Maybe it will be. I don't know. But was that supposed to be exclusive to PS4? Because I believe Sony is helping them uh, push it or something like that. Aren't they helping them uh, produce it or something? I don't know. Anyways, I want to move on. I want to talk about esports real quick. For those who don't know, UC Berkeley Gaming Team wins tournament and wins, check this out, tuition money. That's what I'm talking about. See, that's what these competitions should be about. I understand a lot of people want to say it's not a real sport, and I've said it before, it's not a real sport. But if that's something you can do to win tuition money, I'm all for that. All for it. Because it goes towards their education, you know, and then move forward in life. I don't have a problem with that at all, you know. And if video games can help in that aspect, by all means, that's fine. I want to move on, talk about Nintendo. Yeah. You know, Nintendo, you're really starting to piss me off. You know, last week, last week, we heard 
that Nintendo was going to try and listen to the fans about the Amiibos and things of that nature, and that we're going to try and do better. Now, Nintendo is saying that they plan to bring back out-of-stock Amiibos. That's right. And you know what, Nintendo? You did this purposely. We know that. Now you think that if you announce that you're bringing back out-of-stock Amiibos, that all of a sudden we're going to be like, praise Nintendo? No, I know what you're doing. You're bringing them back, the ones that were out-of-stock, because they, people went frantic and got those. Then when they're out-of-stock, they're like, well, when are they going to come back? Now that you're going to restock them, guess what? Those people are going to go frantic again and go run and get them. I'm not fooled. Nintendo, stop, seriously, man. Seriously, Nintendo. Also, Nintendo's optimistic about removing region lock for their next console. You know, Nintendo... You could do that now with the patch if you wanted to with the Wii U. You know that, right? You could you just you could get rid of region locking. You choose not to. You're going to wait until your next console to say, "Hey, we're for you. We're going to get rid of region locking. You can do it now. I don't want to hear it. No excuses." Okay? Also, Nintendo's new membership service will bridge the 3DS, PC, smart devices and their next console, the NX, with a single login. Why do I feel that is not going to go well? Why do I feel that? Nintendo, seriously, I understand that Nintendo, and you know what? I've been a big supporter of Nintendo, especially these previous, what, two or three years? And I felt it was bad, you know, that, you know, I felt a little bad for them that they weren't getting a lot of third-party stuff, but they prevailed with their first-party stuff as well. And we are seeing slowly but surely some third-party stuff coming along. However, when you make these type of reports, I shouldn't say you make these type, when you make these type of decisions, because you're not reporting stuff, the media is, these type of decisions... That you're going to wait till next generation to come out with some type of region locking. And then and remember, Nintendo, they weren't big for online, but now you're just going to bring out all the guns for this one, aren't you? Look, this membership program, you better have some good stuff with it. You better have some great features, because if not, it's going to fail. I've already seen people in comments already saying, well, I'm not trusting Nintendo after this. And it's not just a lack of games. It's people are upset with the way that they did business with the Amiibos. And, of course, those type of people who were upset with the Amiibos, they were on board at first. Now they're not on board anymore. So, I don't know Nintendo. I still think that Nintendo, for the Wii U, they brought some great games for this generation, current gen if you want to call it the current generation or whatever, last generation, whatever you want to call it, okay? I feel as though they, they brought some good quality games, you know what I mean, that could keep you around. But... This whole NX, knowing that the NX is coming, and we don't know what's going on yet. All we know that now it's, it's confirmed that it is a console. We'll see what they bring to the table. I believe there won't be anything about it at the E3 conference, I don't think. Um, so, I, I don't know. I'm just, right now, me and Nintendo are not on great ground. We're not. Because I just feel, so when you did, like I said, that whole region locking, the, 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 what you did with those Amiibos and those customers, you dicked with them. That's what you did, you fucked with them. And you knew you were doing it, and you didn't give a shit. You didn't. Now that there's some backlash, and now that you've had ample time to sit back and say, okay, now we can do this. Nah, man. Nah. We have more news, though. I want to talk about gamers in general. Or should I say cheaters? Now, not too long ago, I showed you in Grand Theft Auto where people were cheating, and they were getting cars, and they were exploding. There's been, uh, was it, reports now that Rockstar is banning people from using, uh, was it, from using hacks and, and mods in single player games, and I'll just put it like this, that was supposed to, supposed to be discussed last week, I didn't have time, but uh, now Rockstar is coming out and saying that they will not uh, ban anybody for using mods and cheats in single player games, they won't do that, they said it's only multiplayer they'll do that, alright, so let's put that to rest. Now, I want to say about cheats because Guild Wars, for those who don't know, Guild Wars, I believe Guild Wars 2, there's been a cheater running rampant in Guild Wars 2, and the developers decide to punish that cheater. That's right. They decide to make that cheater strip down to all its bare clothing and kill themselves. And then, delete their account and character. For those who have not seen that, let's check that out right now. Live well. Act with wisdom.
a lot of that seems all fun, you know, fine and dandy, and I'm sure some people think it's cool, I'm sure some people are against that as well. Um, I think I would have done things a bit differently, and I put it like this, because for every new player that logs on, you know, they create a, an account, they create a character, as soon as they walk in, that character should have been an NPC. So as soon as they walk in, you see that character dressed just like that, with just the boxers on, with a sign around his neck saying, Cheater. That would have sent the message, no cheating allowed. And I put it like this, you make that person an example, okay? But then after that, every other person who decides to cheat, instead of banning them, I would have really loved to have seen an unstoppable monster constantly hunting them. That They can't be beat. It's invincible just towards that person, that account. You know what I mean? If they get caught cheating. And no matter if they run into, you know, if they're in, uh, uh, was it? In the castle or out, you know, out in the actual fighting area, have people see it. That monster comes in, just destroys them. There's no safe zone for them. You have to get to a point where they get constantly tired of it. And mind you, it should happen within maybe 30 seconds, if that, of when they log in. I would have loved to have seen that so it tells them, look, no more cheating for you. You're done. Did get to the point where they just quit. You know what I mean? Delete their character and just quit. I think that would have sent a, bit, a better message. But that's just me. Um... I want to move on, I want to talk about Alien Isolation. For those who don't know Sega, <sighs> yep, we got to talk about Sega. Sega says that Alien Isolation sales are weak. Mind you, the game sold 2. Point, what, 11 million, 2.1 or 2.11 million, something like that. So, let me get this straight. The sales are weak, and mind you, you're catering to an alien crowd, which isn't big in video games, okay? But you're going to sit here and say that those sales numbers are weak. Did you not forget about Colonial Marines? Did you not forget about that, Sega? That, really? Really? Come on, look. I put it like this. Also, Sega, maybe if you didn't milk the hell out of people and you came out with a Game of the Year edition with all the DLC for Aliens Isolation, people like myself would have picked, picked it up and bought it. Bought it. Just saying. You screwed yourself out of it. See, Sega, when you're down on times and you're down on money... You need to rely on your fans, and you need to treat your fans fairly. And if you don't do it, guess what? That's it. I find it amazing, though, that you would sit here and bag on Alien Isolation when you let that travesty sonic boom go through it. You know what? It's all right. It's all right. Sega is also pulling its games that don't meet its standards from mobile stores. Yeah. Sega's cutting back. Look, obviously Sega needs money. But, um, like I said, if you do the fans right, you won't have to worry about these things, Sega. But you're not doing the fans right. So Sega, what have you learned? Don't blame the fans. Oh, the sales weren't great for Alien Isolation. Really? Really? So you pretty much just told people, look, you didn't buy our game. That's, that's what you just told them. You've got to be kidding me. Like, come, come on here. That's not the way to go about things. But leave it to Sega. All right. So if we wanted Alien Isolation 2, I guess we wouldn't get it because the sales weren't there. I guess. Right, whatever. Anyways, I'm going to move on. Assassin's Creed Syndicate. That's right. They're coming out with another Assassin's Creed. You think that Ubisoft would get the message, and they've already the fans have already told them. We've talked about this before. The fans have told them we don't want any more Assassin's Creeds. Give it a break. We're tired, and they're still going to keep giving you Assassin's Creed. Anyways, Assassin's Creed Syndicate will feature female playable character. Didn't learn from the last one, huh? I guess this is the answer to it's hard to animate females. But then again, the last Assassin's Creed, it was hard to animate any character, wasn't it? They had so many patches for the game, so many problems. Yeah. Okay, Ubisoft, you keep doing that. You keep, yeah, you keep doing it. Anyways, they also announced, Ubisoft, that there will be no more Assassin's Creed games for the PS3 and 360. But they will continue to make Just Dance. <laughs> First off, I think people from the 360 era... And the PS3 era, which is still myself, we're happy that we're not getting any more Assassin's Creed games. <laughs> Seriously. But just dance. Yeah, we'll keep doing that because there's so many people who just want to dance, right? That, that's all it comes down to. Okay, GG. Okay, let's keep going. Capcom. I told you I'd get back to Capcom. I told you. Let's start with this. Capcom is planning more HD remasters next year. You don't learn. You don't learn. I put it like this, if it's not a big time uh, title that fans have been asking for, don't even bother doing it. How about that? But the fact that you need to rely on HD remasters instead of making, you know, new IPs, tells me a lot. Capcom, you are in the dumps right now, but that is not all. They also go on to say that digital delivery will be highlighted as a key focus going forward for Capcom. 
digital. Really, Capcom? Digital. So, so you want to pull an EA. How is that working out for EA? Other than DLC, other than add-ons, how is that working out for EA when it comes to just absolute games, full games? How is that working out for them? It's not really working out much for anybody unless you have some type of spring sale or some type of flash sale. And even then, people still complain about how much it's going to, you know, how much memory it's going to take up. But then again, we'll just have to go and get new hard drives, right? That's what we'll have to do. You know, especially people from the PS3. See, ever since the PS3 and 360 would let you have, you know, different hard drives, it's a whole different ball game now. But, of course, as we know, I'm sure PC people say, well, we've been doing that for ages. Yeah, I know, you have been. You have. But it's a set. Anyways, more Capcom news. This is where we're going to get into the worst part of Capcom news. Not just that afterwards, we're going to roll right into Konami. Yeah, we're going to roll right into them. Anyways, Capcom. DMC4 Special Edition, all right, will be released on June 23rd. Now, I know some people are saying, no, I can't, look, I can't wait, they're looking forward to that. You want to know the problem with that is, for those who are probably watching this video right now and already saying, hey, wait a minute, that's, yeah. That's the same day that Batman Arkham Knight comes out. So you're telling me you're going to run up Double May Cry, an HD version with these features, against Batman Arkham Knight, which has won multiple Game of the Year editions already in the previous installments? Are you crazy, Capcom? Do you not like money? Why wouldn't you push that back? Why wouldn't you push it forward? Why would you want to contend with Batman? That's just stupid. And I put it like this, I understand that Double May Cry crowd, you have to understand, everything that the Double May Cry crowd has been through, alright, it's bad enough that, the, you know, that in the West, we're not getting a physical copy, now you're keeping it digital, as you see, that's going to be their plan now, the focus to go digital, and then you bring it on the same day as Batman Arkham Knight, it's like, almost like you want it to fail, what's wrong with you? Because I put it like this, people who do want to pick up Double May Cry, but they're also Batman fans, look, Gamers only have but so much cash, and of course, some are, you know, of us adults, I should say, we do have the money to buy both. We do, but also we have a lot of people who do work. They have families to take care of. They have all this type of stuff. So, if you're only going to pick one, you know what I mean. And as we know, Capcom right now, the way they're treating their fans isn't very well. We also know WB Games isn't treating their fans very well. But when it comes down to quality, in the previous installments of these games, when it comes to said companies. You have to look at it and say, okay, well, Rocksteady has had a better record as of late than Capcom has with their Devil May Cry series. I know a lot of people are looking forward to Devil May Cry Special Edition 4, but let's be honest here. Batman is going to sell a hell of a lot more. To put it on the same day as Batman, it's going to get crushed. It's going to get crushed. And you know people are going to do the comparisons. You know it's going to happen. It's going to get crushed. It's just a bad move for Capcom. Let's move on, Konami! Konami. Oh my god, Konami. Konami! Removing Silent Hill PT. We're going to talk about this, alright? It's reported that it's locking users entirely out of their PS4 libraries. So, when they try to take it away from the server, alright? And this is what it says. PS PSN checks all licenses at once. If one does not exist on network, all DRM... DRM! Digital service again! All DRM checks for PSN fail. So, just, it says, so just check... Even deleting PT does not remove its license from your system. If you download PT ever at a point, then you will be you will be unable to renew the license for your digital games. That's all your games. And this is why we have a problem with digital. This is why people have a problem with DRM. This is exactly the problem that we are having. This is why things need to stay physical. However, I understand that people are going to buy things when it comes to flash sales. But the fact that you remove PT... This should be... a what, what have you learned, Konami? What have you learned? Because you try your, you're trying your hardest to get rid of PT instead of just leaving it there. Because if you had left it there, no one would give a damn at this point. Yeah, it was canceled, but they say, hey, it's a cool little demo to play. That's it. But now that you're trying so hard to get rid of PT so that people, as we said last week, okay, because people are going to keep asking about it, now you put yourself in a hole. And now you've made it even worse because now people can't get to the rest of their damn games because you want to pull it. That's not all. It's not all, Konami. For those who don't know, Konami hits YouTuber with copyright strike for criticizing them in wake of PT. Now, understand that the video that was copyright stricken, all right, it was taken down, apparently, for what I hear, um, had nothing, it meant all, it, it, I'll play this, it qualified for all the things uh, copyright-wise. And what I mean by that is, in the YouTuber's favor. 
There was no cop. There was they. They did nothing wrong when it came to using Konami. You know, in their likeness or anything like nothing. Konami just decided to abuse the YouTube system. Guess what they did? This is absolutely ridiculous. You know what, Konami? You can fuck off. Because I don't think you have anything else that, that, that's even remotely even worth buying from you if you're going to act that way. You're, you're copyright, are you that sensitive that you're copyright striking people for having an opinion? An opinion! Didn't show anything that was against you, Konami, for having an opinion. That is ridiculous. Not to mention locking out PS4 owners of their, their games. and You just, you really do want to make a running for, you know, one of the worst companies this year, don't you? You are trying your hardest to get rid of one demo. That's what this is all about. One demo. That's what you're trying to get rid of. Because you got rid of Kojima or whatever. Fine. Whatever. But one demo you're trying to get rid of. And it's caused all this problem. All these problems. I'm sorry. All these problems. It's un unreal. Unreal. But speaking of Konami. I want to talk about the fact that we've been asking for Castlevania for so long. And we still haven't gotten to Castlevania because Konami, that's what we should be having right now. And you're still not listening. Well, for those who don't know, Bloodstained. That's right. Bloodstained Ritual, uh, which is pretty much the spiritual successor to Castlevania, had a Kickstarter and has been fully funded. That's right. So get ready for Bloodstained. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, this game looks amazing. For what I've seen so far, I am on I am on the boat with this one. I'm ready for this. Because we've been waiting for a Castlevania game for so long. A, you know, a true 2D Castlevania. This is what we've been waiting for. So I'm going to get behind this one. This looks really good. Konami, you just shot yourself in the foot again. And this is just this week, Konami, that you've done all these things. Okay, let's, let's keep moving on because I want to talk about more spiritual successors. Uh, for those who don't know, Banjo-Kazooie. That's right, spiritual successor... Uh, what was it, Ukulele smashes their funding goal in under an hour. In under an hour. And you know what? I have to say that I'm very happy to see this. But the developers, the makers of this game, it makes it even better what they said on Twitter about publishers and companies who said that this game wouldn't fly. And that is a great example of companies not knowing what the fuck gamers want. However, it goes to show you that this relationship between developers and the community and gamers, that should be at the forefront because that's how you keep in contact so that they know what you want and that you'll buy. That's what it comes down to. This is why when I see Twitter, I'm like, you know, you can use this as a tool for something that's really great for, you know, to, to communicate instead of seeing people shit post and harass all damn day. This is something you can use for a great thing and get the games that you want. It's amazing to see that gamers stepped up for this Kickstarter and said, yep, we're going to do this. And now this game is being made. It's great to see. By all means. However, like I said, that's what should be at the forefront. And companies still don't know what the hell they're doing. I want to talk about that right now. I think this is a little bit too, you know, too little too late, okay? Darksiders 2 and Saints Row 3 are going DRM free. Just now. They're just now going DRM free. It, it, whatever. As far as I'm concerned, just whatever. All right. Also, Far Cry 4. I want to talk about this. Is some positive news. Far Cry 4 dev is raising money for Nepal. Was it earthquake relief? We also saw this not too long ago. I believe uh, was it the people from Skyrim did uh, did it as well. So um, it's it's just great to see. You know, it goes to show you that if you can stay as a community and you can keep your head on your shoulders and you can go about things the right way, things can get done. True. Progression. Instead, we're seeing a bunch of people just act like some blithering jackasses. You know what I mean? And and, and making accusations and I'm so oppressed. It's a bunch of bullshit, man. It really is. Like I said, if people really want to see true oppression, go outside into a bad neighborhood. See all those abandoned buildings. See all those squatters in those buildings. See all those homeless people. Like, seriously, don't, don't tell me about oppression over Twitter. All right? I don't want to hear it. It's bullshit. Now the industry may... Like I said, they have some cleaning up to do. They do. But it's not just the industry. It's also the media. They have a lot of cleaning up to do in the media. Right? A lot. But it just goes to show you, if we stay as a community, we stay united as one, we can do anything, man. Anything. And I don't want to sound cliche, but it's true. When you see these Kickstarters go through and they're funded so quickly, that's because of community. You understand that, right? Okay. Like I said, that's what it comes to. It's just sad that we can't go about, you know, other issues in the same, you know, the same way. 
It just seems like every once in a while you see a person that has a set agenda and they try to go out and just destroy anything that's somewhat positive. We see that from time to time. And those type of individuals, they're pretty sad. I don't even pity them at this point. It's like, no, you've made your bed, go lie in it, you're on your own. You must be a fucked up individual. But, of course, they won't, you know, they won't look at each other, you know, look at themselves, I'm sorry, that way. But the community's doing, if you ask me, they've, they've been doing a pretty good job, especially this week. They've done a pretty good job. I'll say that, you know. These companies really need to get on the ball, but you have to understand that these companies are looking to take your money. It's not just, we're trying to be friendly. You have to understand, there are companies who are willing to, to listen to you and be friendly, and then there's companies who put that illusion on that they're your friend, and they're not. Like, Capcom is not your friend. EA is not your friend. You know what I mean? Things of that nature. I understand you can be fans of the products, and we see so many fanboys. They're not your friend. You could quit right now, and they would not give a shit. You have to understand that. And like I said, when you start seeing, well, our projected stuff of units sold, blah, 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 that's how they see you. They don't see you as a person. They see you as a unit sold. That's what they see you as. And not all companies are like that. But there are who are, you know, there are some. Granted, statistically, they have to put that down. But when you say, you know, we expect, you know, like EA, we expect 9, 10 million for Star Wars. It's like, are you serious? Like, to even, th like, that to me just screams arrogance. And a lot of you said that last week, too. It does scream arrogance. You know? The projection is just keep them to yourselves. All right? And the fact that you're trying to defend all these features being just cut off, and, and clearly people are mad... But I guess you would just say it's the vocal minority again as well, huh? I guess that's what you'll say. Vocal minority. Alright, we'll see. Anyways, I'm done for the day. I'll talk to y'all later. Tomorrow, we'll do another stream for charity. And you guys and girls have voted that I will play, again, Kingdom Hearts. So, we'll get back on Kingdom Hearts again. And just, listen, Kingdom Hearts, y'all voted and it was pretty good. And uh, second runner-up was Hot Shots Golf. So, in the future, the games that... I won't be playing this week. We will play in the future as well. So I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all be safe. 2 p.m. tomorrow. I'm out.